Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Entrepreneur Talks Podcast. This is our season two, run by Women Flicks. My name is Yola Bast. Follow us on social media by Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You will be able, by these platforms, listen, share, and like our podcast sessions. So, don't forget, follow us on social media. And if you want, you also can follow us on Spotify or iTunes or Anchor. You have plenty of choices or you can choose all. So, I just want to say have fun because it's new stories, new season, new inspirations. Stay tuned and I speak with you later. Bye. My guest for the podcast today is Alison Donaghy. She is an international best-selling author, successful entrepreneur since 2000, and the host of a popular podcast, Domino Thinking with Alison. She wants the world to know that worthiness is the foundation of everything we say, do, and feel But if we are not getting our worth in a healthy way, which is internally, we are getting in an unhealthy way externally and we'll find ourselves in the victimhood or a victim state, which is a horrible way to go through life. Alison helps people reclaim their worth so that can on their life, their choices, and their freedom. Let's welcome Alison. Hello, Alison, and thank you so much for joining me on my podcast today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's a delight to be here and talk with you. You're welcome, my dear. So let me ask you, can you tell me more about worthiness? Yeah, for sure. I love talking about worthiness. Um, worthiness is basically the underlying, I think, foundation to every single choice, action, thing we say, of people we choose, the clothes we wear, everything. And I think we don't talk about worthiness enough. Um, we know we are born miracles and that makes us inherently worthy. Like when you think about this little tiny sperm finding this little tiny egg and making you not a thousand other um, possibilities of you, but it made you and um, that makes you a miracle. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. And um, right. <laughs> and uh, so therefore you are inherently worthy and then you're born and the world tells you you're not good enough. You're not fast enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not tall enough, you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, you're not whatever enough, and we believe it. And then we spend the rest of our life trying to get our worth back. And there's two ways we can do it. We can do get it internally or externally. And when we get it internally, it's a really healthy place that means we're standing strong. And what happens in the world around us has little impact on us. If somebody doesn't like you, that's okay. If somebody says something mean, It's still about them and you don't have to take it all on. But when we try to get our worth externally, then we are relying on other people for our happiness. And when we are constantly being triggered by every single thing that they say or do, because our worth isn't intact. And then we find ourselves in this victim state, which is a really horrible place to live. All right. Now I got it. The victim state. I was mm. wondering. Uh, and <laughs> I was wondering <laughs> before, victim states, what is that means? Yeah, it's that state of being, right? And you can be in the state of victim or you can be in the state of freedom. And when your internal worth is intact, you get to live in a, st in a freedom state. And when it's not intact, you're almost always in a victim state. Okay. 
Okay, got it. And have you found yourself in a victim state and why did you stay there? Oh God, all the time. <laughs> you know, it's um, because it is a really natural place for us to default to. And so I, um, I was sexually assaulted in high school and I felt like a victim through all of that. And it actually, and it wasn't until I understood the, um, how I co-created it, which is not to say I deserved it or I'm blaming the victim or I'm letting him off the hook or any of those things. But it is really, really difficult to look at a situation and say, this was my part in that. Um, and as soon as I did that, I stopped being his victim. Now that took me almost 15 years. <laughs> Wow. To figure but I out. Understand, I understand where you're coming from because it's the part of the victim and to become like how I say to become a victim mm -hmm. and what you do before to become a victim that affects yeah. you as a to become a victim if I make sense is a big oh my god that is perfectly put like <laughs> you're absolutely right it's all of our choices today lead to our experiences tomorrow and live to the future beyond that and we we lose sight of that we um we we forget that we've played a part in it um and that's not to place blame or fault mm -hmm. it just is it's just the construction of how things work Wow, wonderful. And you, um, and when you were there on that victim state, um, what was keeping you there what, from moving forward? Oh, lots of things. Um, like low self-worth, like that's what got me into it in the first place. <laughs> I didn't know I was worthy of feeling any better. I didn't know I was worthy of being treated any better. Um, people felt sorry for me. It allowed me to um, rage whenever I wanted to. And I would just be like, well, it wasn't my fault. I was a victim. Um, it really allowed me to excuse a lot of bad behavior and get this really unhealthy attention from people. I, too, I understand. Fantastic. And Alison, uh, so what do you do today to in your life, on, on your work? How do you, do you use this experience to, to help other people, to help other women? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I have a program that helps people understand worthiness. I also have a free giveaway as well. It's called Brave because it does require a level of um, courage to step out of the victim state into a freedom state. Because when you're in a freedom state, yes, you have lots of freedom, but you are also fully responsible for yourself and your choices. And that takes courage, right? It's, it is not always easy to stand there and say, I co-created this experience. Um, but when we do, the strength and freedom inside of ourselves is worth it. Uh, so I do help people go through that. I do help people understand where they're where they're getting their worth from, how to get it in a more healthy way. And I, we talk about it on my podcast and, and I do Facebook lives around it as well. Oh, and I just think okay. it's so important that we have this conversation because we are constantly doing all of this self-help work, right? But when we don't actually stop and consider the layer below and the layer below is always worthiness. And so when we um uh, when we are trying to be vulnerable for example right like Brene Brown does beautiful work around vulnerability but if our internal worth isn't intact it's really difficult for us to be honest and then that uh, vulnerability that attempt to be honest becomes manipulation Correct. and then we keep ourselves in this cycle of not getting what we want in a healthy way so it is really um it's it's such it's such intricate work and it is just the basis of everything in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> great yes i agree and so and you and you work i know you are international best-selling author what is your book or what's the name how oh, many books do you have i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i have the one book and so uh, okay. i started um actually a house painting company 20 years ago, I also have a background in psychology, sociology, and criminology. And uh, somebody was talking to me about business because I was on welfare when I started my company. And yeah. uh, people said, well, how did you do that? Like, how do I do that? And so I said, well, 
I, maybe I should write a book about it. So I wrote a book about uh, business and people said to me, whoa, that is so amazing. Like it really helped with my business, but it helped me understand my child better or it helped me get along with my spouse better. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, the way that you put it in perspective about you know being accountable. And then that was just one more um, cog in the wheel of moving towards this worthiness piece. So it, I just find it fascinating how life works. Like if somebody told me when I was a single mom on welfare that I would be having this conversation with you about worthiness, I would have been like, what? No way. But uh, yeah, that's how that all came about. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And you also had your online radio, which turned to a podcast. There's so many amazing things in your, in your story. <laughs> well, I am 50. Living. So, <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> right. So we do tend to, and that's, I think the other thing too, when we are curious and when we're searching, we do find ourselves going through a variety of things. And I don't think we should ever really apologize for that. Yeah. You know, there are people out there who, when the time that they're five years old, they know they want to be a doctor. And their whole life is moving towards that direction of being the doctor, which is fantastic. And I used to be really envious of that. But people like me, when we're searching for answers and we're searching for clarity and we're searching, I think it's really normal for us to try something, get really good at it, move on to something else, get really good at it, move on to something else and get really good at it. Great. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. So true, Alison. And tell me more about your movement. Yeah, it's called My Part, and I would love to see it become a movement. And My Part is really understanding how we co-create situations. Okay. To really take that step back and say, what is my part in this? If you're having an argument with somebody, what's my part? Am I not listening? Did I actually do something and I don't want to take ownership of it? Um, <coughs> that doesn't mean you're supposed to take on their part. Like the entire argument is not 100% your responsibility. Only your part in it is your responsibility. And then the other person has a choice of whether or not they want to accept their part. So this isn't about taking on ownership of other people's junk. It's taking care of you and how you are showing up in any given situation. Mm, and what and, is this? What is this movement? Uh, is is how you do with this? Where you do this movement? Is in a group? Uh, no, through things like this, talking about it, getting people really considering what their part is, is just having this organic conversation. We do talk about it in my group. Um, you know, I had a program called My Part, and then it morphed into uh, Reclaim Your Worth. And so uh, it's just really embedded in everything that I do because one of the beautiful things about owning your part in a situation is it allows you to stop being a victim. You can't say I contributed to the situation and stay a victim. Correct. It's just not possible. Now, I want to clarify here though, that victimization is real. Bad things are going to happen to people. And feeling like a victim from that is real. But victimhood, and this, that's the same as the victim state, that is not a healthy place to live. That is not where you want to set up your camp and spend your life in it. So this helps people move out of it. Okay, but you know that is so, so many people that live in that place and they don't see a way to come out because they don't have maybe strategies or even where they living or how they live the culture or anything, just make them a prisoner for life till they leave this world. Don't you? Yeah, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I've done work in yeah. prisons and if people can feel free in prison, you can feel free on the outside world. Viktor Frankl wrote that beautiful book, Man's Search for Meaning, um, as did uh, Dr. Eva, Evelyn Eva Egger, uh, called The Choice, and they were both Auschwitz survivors. And they both talked about how we live in a state of choice all the time. We might not be able to control our external environment, but we can control who we are on the inside. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. awesome. Which is not to condone the bad things that happen to people in the world. Like, that's not okay. It's, um, you know, there's tragic situations in the world. And I'm not trying to um, downplay the seriousness of those at all. But I think it's so important that we find a place inside of ourselves that it feels free. And, and it's not, it's sneaky work. 
<laughs> this this f- trying to find out when we're feeling like a victim. I had somebody take my course one time and she had done a ton of self-help work and she was this very um, bright, um, self-aware young woman. And mm-hmm. um, during one of the weeks, she phoned me up and she was just like, I am so mad at you because I didn't want to think about where I was being a victim in this situation. And when I finally admitted it, I talked to my husband about it and I realized I was playing the victim card with him and I didn't even know it. He knew it, but I didn't know it. And you may have saved our marriage. And so it is really, really sneaky the way it weaves into um, our lives. And I still fall into it. Like I do this work and I fall into it. So I hope anybody listening isn't going to be too harsh on themselves. It's a normal state. It's just not a healthy state. (laughs) Yes, it's true. And even right now with the coronavirus, right? Because Mm. you can either stay on the victim side or you just move on and do whatever you can for your days be better or change your perspective of seeing things because some people is just panicking and yeah well and you, we got to make lemonade panic room. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's something people can invest in they can spend their ener- time and energy building a panic room mm-hmm. um but action actually helps subside the panic It's when we are inactive, when we are not um, moving forward and when we're not trying to create or do something, that is where that victim state loves to live. I totally agree. And if people stay there Mm -hmm. and by the way, just asking you, how are you and your family doing with this Corona? Is anyone (laughs) on the state of the victim state or or you can handle everyone to take them out? (laughs) Uh, You know, actually I am, I am doing amazing (laughs) as you know, terrible. Like I'm worried about my staff and I'm worried about my business and my mortgages and you know, all of that stuff. Like it's, yeah, I do have worry around it, but I am really embracing this quiet time. <laughs> like, right. it's a side that is is powerful. It's a side of this that is bringing so much for we take in and we and we create and we empower and we do. It's not our true. I feel like that. I, yeah. I <laughs> it is just I and I I wasn't expecting it. Like, cause I've gone on some extended trips, but I've never felt this sense of calm. Um, because there's always like, oh, let's go do an activity. Oh, let's go meet these people. Oh, let's go do this, right? Or I'm checking in all the time, making sure business is going fine. This is probably the first time in 30 years I have just got to be and not stress about things. Like <laughs> if anybody told me I was going to have this reaction, I would have been like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but how are you making out? It's beautiful. I just, I embrace the positive way side of I do work as well on health so I do work in hospital I've Mm. got that side where I see people panicking through Mm. like between my colleagues more between colleagues because of the fact that no protection and etc but then I see the other side I can do so much I'm doing so much more Alison now than I was doing when I I could go out, I could do a lot of stuff, but I'm right now, I'm just embracing this time inside the house. I can clean, I can dance, I can create, (laughs) I can podcast, I can do so much and I'm having fun. (laughs) Oh, that is, well, yeah, you sound like it too. That is amazing. And I just want to thank you for like the rest of the world for being in that caring profession and taking care of us. That frontline work is so important. And, and it's, I think really undervalued a lot, like the risk that you guys are in day in and day out. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. (laughs) I also, I believe I had my part already. I had my flu. I fight to fight the virus. So, and I'm now I'm done. I think I'm done. I don't know because you know, that's the thing. And it's so many information and it's so many things about this CV-19 that you get Mm -hmm. to a point. I just closed my door actually in terms of this because I decided to carry what I learned from the beginning and add some things, but not adding too much because it's too much information and people yeah. getting the panic comes from there and people is just getting frustrated and 
afraid so much because we never know if you had the virus you will carry the virus or you don't carry the virus or if you don't have the virus you are, it's just a role it's like um i don't know a ton of something that is going around and around and around and around <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. yeah different. yeah well and it's so easy to um start focusing on that negative stuff and yeah. it and there's and it's so hard to know the truth like i had somebody posting and i almost never unfriend people just because i really love other people's points of view but she was saying that this isn't a real virus that people aren't dying from COVID. they're dying from having been around or willing to be uh, spending too much time with 3g and eating um processed foods no, that's her. no no I and i was just like i can't even be a part of that this, yeah. energy um or conversation or that idea of reality i am really good at trying to understand other people's <laughs> headspace and their point of view because they've had a lifetime of experience that has led them to where they are and so i don't think we should ever discount somebody else's point of view but that has just gone into a crazy town and i cannot i just i can't I totally have that then i totally understand i'm um, another example i can bring here is I'm, um, how I say, I've got my faith. I believe in something. But mm -hmm. to the point that you believe and you think like everything is under that belief. Yeah. And because nothing is going to come to you because you believe in your, in your God, that's yeah. totally wrong. Because even on the belief, if you believe in some, in some God, doesn't mean like you're going to be free of the virus right now oh yeah you understand yeah. these people and I, I i say to myself i can't go through this i don't have time for this yeah it's really, difficult i rather stop the conversation or get off or block or like you said taking unfriend someone which is painful for me but it's yeah the, it's the best for my sake <laughs> right like something pretty extreme has to happen for me to do it so i totally understand because i don't ever want to intentionally exclude people from a conversation yeah, but they think there's just damage that goes on that just cannot be tolerated and i would be negating my internal worth by allowing that to exist Your life yes. right because i'm now in a position where i either have to speak to it or i have to leave the room so i left the room yeah yeah and people forget like yeah jesus walked amongst lepers but yeah. we're not jesus <laughs> yes. Yes. right <clears throat> so i and i love i think when people have faith it can be such a beautiful thing i'm not knocking the the faith part of it um i just think that that's great if you don't get it but if you could you could carry it and not get it and that meant you might be giving it to other people yes and nobody has the right to do that no yes so true yeah. wonderful alison we're coming to the end of our podcast and i'm so glad that we had this conversation amazing Me too. <laughs> you are such a delight thank you beautiful one <laughs> more question for sure how apart from radio podcast how do you connect to with audience how my listeners can find you i uh, the easiest thing is my website dominothinking.com and on there is a free download for that brave that i was talking about and that really helps people when you're getting triggered by something to get through it in a really healthy way and it's really effective and uh, people are enjoying it and they're using it implementing it i use it all the time and so that is my free gift to you so definitely go to dominothinking.com and everything is there my podcast my contact information all of the things and i would love to hear from any of your listeners that want to talk marvelous thank you so much so thank you this was is uh, this was our moment and i love it i really loved to be here with you it was amazing uh, well, I appreciate what you're doing in the world, having this podcast, reaching out, taking care of people who aren't well. And I think the world is better with you in it. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>
And also on our profile, you will get access to a link which will take you to Anchor, Spotify, iTunes or other platforms where you can listen podcast sessions. Thank you once again. And I speak with you very soon. I see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.